there, it's Chrissy again for part two of this mid-deployment brief. I suggest watching this in conjunction with some of the other briefs we've had on the emotional cycles of deployment, specifically emotional cycle four, recovery and stabilization. So we've just finished talking up, we've, we just talked a little bit about communication, new methods. Um, I wanna actually take this time to say, um, expressing yourself clearly, that is always um, a little bit subjective. Um, what might seem very clear to you on one side might read completely different on the other side. And I'll provide you a little bit of a personal story for a moment. Um, when I was dating my now spouse, was my significant other at the time, um, he had gone away for a trip and I was working and this was back in the days before um, before iPhones or um, the real, the smartphones. Um, I had a flip phone and I had left work that day and I had a appointment to get my hair cut. And so I went over to the salon and as I was at the salon, I looked and I saw my phone battery just like go to like 8% and then die. And I said, oh, do you have one of these types of chargers? And they rifle around and they look and they were like, no, sorry, we don't. And I'm like, okay, well, um, all right, I'll just, uh, you know, I'll wait until I get home. And then as I was done getting my hair done, which by the way, like women's hair appointments, I wish they were like men's appointments, but women's hair appointments, they can sometimes be three hours long. Oh my goodness. And it, and more expensive, might I, might I add, which I, have a, which I take issue with, but that's neither here nor there. So I leave the um, the salon and I run into a friend of mine, and uh, we decide that we want to maybe you know go have dinner. I'm I don't have any uh, anything going on that day. Neither does she. We know each other. We're friends. And I said, hey, do you have one of those phone chargers because I really need to go charge my phone? And she says, oh yeah, I have one. Um, let's swing by my house and we'll go pick it up and charge your phone for a little bit. When I get there, it doesn't. It's not the right one. And so I was like, oh, well, let me call my significant other because this person might be worried about me. Uh, yes, that person was very worried about me. Um, my significant other, now my spouse, had been trying to reach me for about three hours. So um, he had gone through all of the horrible scenarios, me, you know, my body's off in a ditch somewhere, um, never heard from again, um, had reached out to several other people to see if they could get in touch with me, um, but was very worried because in that lens that he had at the moment was something bad has happened because I can't get a hold of the person I'm always able to get a hold of. Whereas me on the other side, I'm just thinking, footloose, fancy free, don't have any plans. I'm just gonna see where the day takes me. And that was a miscommunication. So some of the other things that I hear about happening and may or may not have happened to me um, are some of the things like, hey, I you know, was never really into sending emails, but I sent this really long email to my significant other, um, sent it off. I knew, I saw that there was a read receipt um, and heard nothing back. And then I go back two hours later and there's still no email. And then I look and check the time and it's in California, Southern California, it's the middle of the night on Saturday night. Why hasn't this person written me back? So I assume that they're at the club and they're out and they're doing all of these fun things. Well, I'm out here serving my country and I'm doing what I need to do. So I rattle off one of those nasty grams. And then lo and behold, this person Someone got sick, went to the hospital, went to go, someone went into labor and, and we weren't able to bring our phones in because I had to go into an area where that wasn't allowed. So think to how your lens might be and what is actually happening on the other side. So one of those things is called perspective taking and this is one of the things that we talk about in some of our other classes on resiliency. So expressing again, bringing your communication back into I messages. I couldn't get a hold of you. I was really scared. I was be getting very worried instead of you're being irresponsible. You should have never done that. I can't believe that you would do something like this. Realize how you might be feeling and own your own feelings in that moment, okay? Instead of creating one of those big fights, 
um, from 3,000 miles away, where in the end, if you would have been able to communicate uh, maybe by phone or by face, in, in face in person, that might not have been an issue. So okay. consider how the mode might cause miscommunication. Um, and some of you might have had that experience. <laughs> Hopefully not, um, but this does happen. So just realize that miscommunication can run rampant. Um, one of the other ways that you can reach out is by sharing some kind of a long distance hobby. I actually recommend this for couples and I recommend it for children. So for example, my child uh, might be too old for me to do uh, United Through Reading. They don't exactly want me to come and read a story, um, a children's book. However, my child might be old enough to read Harry Potter or some novel. And I can just go and grab a book from the ship library and then we can read a book together and share communication that way. So instead of that being like, oh, same day, I went to the galley today or I went and went to work and came home, nothing new is really happening, um, start talking about that book. And some of the other things that I suggest for service members and for um, significant others is think about other ways that you can communicate like sharing um, sharing like a list of 20 questions to get to know you questions. Even if you've been with someone for a very long time, like maybe start asking questions about their past or things they want to do in their future. Um, also consider song lyrics, poems. Um, this is what it felt like the day we got married. This is what I thought when we first, when I first met you. Um, these were, these were the things I was thinking about when we had our first child. So you can develop a big bank of those emails while you're having maybe some downtime. And then when you have one of those really quick days where, oh, nothing happened today. It's the same day as always. Here's something I wrote to you um, a month ago or before deployment or, um, the last time that I had some time and uh, love you, miss you, can't wait to see you, send it off. So think about ways to make it more interesting, okay? Um, you could journal about your day, share your emotions, um, creating some kind of a playlist like song lyrics would be good or um, some other way you can send uh, communication that's not, not always the same method. And then uh, homemade coupons. If that's your jam, I don't really know if that's something I wanna do, but if it works for you, go ahead. So consider that communication will be different. Expect miscommunication and be willing to take some perspective taking, okay? Think about what is happening in this other person's life and how am I viewing it through a specific lens based on my environment and what I'm experiencing. Now, operation security still applies to all communication during deployment, okay? Anything that relates to the command mission Anything about ships movements, anything about the command morale or any kind of personal problems, that can be difficult if you are, um, if you're feeling very emotionally charged. If you feel that way, um, I would suggest either take it, take a draft email, don't put anything in the two line, write down what you feel like, and then let it be. Um, don't send it. Don't put it anywhere else. If you need to just take a notebook and journal how you're feeling at the moment, um, that's a good way to deal with some of the personal problems or some of the morale problems you might be experiencing. Um, but that is not a good thing to send over uh, public communication, okay? Um, I find that sometimes when I feel like I need to send an emotionally charged email or I might wanna uh, call and rattle off on someone really quickly, I like to take four deep breaths on my computer screen or my TV or whatever, my phone, and usually I find that that will bring me down enough that I can kind of respond in the way that I want to with the intended outcome rather than give off a lot of emotions and just dispel those really quickly because it's an uncomfortable situation for me to be in, okay? So consider the 24 hour rule if you feel like you need to write any kind of an emotionally charged email, but please do not send anything about command morale or personal problems. Um, scheduled or potential port calls, you never wanna be the reason that a ship cannot go into port or have um, some of their liberty because you said something that was not okay to say, all right? And then any homecoming dates, we're going to uh, not speak about that in any communication mode, okay? Refer to your ombudsman, 
refer to your um, public affairs officer if you have any questions about that. And um, consider that if you have to second guess, it's best not to, all right? So I'm gonna come back for part three of mid-deployment. We're gonna talk about self-care and some other mid-deployment strategies. Bye.